Uh, something that uh, shocked me at the beginning of this series, which um, ultimately turned around to a source of uh, great inspiration, was the uh, extreme reaction that uh, my views on this matter provoked among some people. Um, it does sound to me as though some people have decided that my views are something along the lines of the worst possible philosophy in the universe. Um, I'm advocating that we prolong life addiction, and I'm just the worst possible thing, uh, worst possible uh, uh, being imaginable. Now, I... I I don't really have a problem with that. It, it, it is actually a very interesting situation to be in. It's, it really makes you think when you see somebody who seems to see you in that light. And what's most important is that they seem to be sincere. They seem to actually believe that you're that evil, that you're that bad. And trying to figure out why anyone would see you that way is quite interesting. And instead of getting disgusted by it and, and, and sh shrinking back from it, I'm kind of intrigued by it. What is it that I've done or said that convinces people I'm so terrible? Um, one, of the, one of the things that I mentioned in the previous video was this idea of harm and the fact that we cannot really define it. And one of the things that I find that Benatar does in his books is he, he overvalues harm. In fact, I would say placing any value on harm or harm's opposite, whatever that is, is simply placing value. Um, it's simply a value judgment. Harm is neither good nor bad. Harm just is. It's like anything else that exists phenomenally. It just is. Um, whatever we decide uh, this uh, phenomenon is, is what it is, what it becomes. It's us that places the value on everything that's out there. Everything that's outside of this only has value because of what's inside of this. Um, that's why I said I don't want to have examples of harm. I don't want to have synonyms for harm. I want to know exactly what harm is. We know what harm is, actually. But um, actually coming up with a, uh, an accurate description of harm's ultimate nature is nigh on impossible uh, due to A, the limitations of language, and B, the fact that what harm is, is completely subjective and it varies from person to person. We can understand in a general sense what it is, but that's why I say that if disappointment is harm, then parents harm their kids every time they try to give their kids what they want. Um, and then, of course, you're also harming your kids by not giving them what they want. So harm is not so easily defined. But we know what it is, or we know what we have decided ourselves what it is. So I'm not going to say that we can just sort of say there's no such thing as harm and we can go around harming each other. What I'm saying is we have to understand what harm actually is. And um, what harm actually is, as I've said, is what we all decide it is. We have to make rules for um, for existing in in this world, but I'm you know laws, morals, this sort of thing. But I, I'm hastening to point out the fact that these rules and laws and morals and codes of conduct are extremely clumsy, and uh, that's why we have to have courts and arguments and constant obsession over whether or not harm has been done in a certain case or other. Court cases, lawsuits, this sort of thing. It's not cut and dried. It never is, and it can't in the very nature of things be, because we all have a different idea as to what harm is, and one person's harm is another person's ambrosia. It just doesn't work that way. Life is not so convenient. Now, this brings me to the, um, to the idea of um, the picture that I uh, mentioned in my previous video and asked people to comment on. Um, harm is that which we flee from, that which is undesirable, that which we decide to push away from ourselves. It's the opposite of desire. Um, desire is that which we pull towards ourselves. Desire uh, is what we want or we think we want. Harm is that which we push away, the two polarities of a magnet, as we all learned in uh, high school physics. 
Um, and I would say that they are one and the same. That the desire to push something away from yourself is the same as the desire to pull it towards yourself. Or, I won't say perhaps that it's exactly the same, but it's the inevitable result. Einstein's action and reaction are equal and opposite. This brings me to the, uh, to the, to the painting. We like to think of ourselves as going towards the good, but something, or to the light or whatever, but something pulls us towards the darkness. We've all seen the rebellious goth teenager who's pierced his nose, dyed his hair black, and is wearing black uh, lipstick and black leather and deliberately keeps his face pale. Um, possibly, um, I, I won't try and play psychologist here, but possibly as a re uh, reaction against his parents who want to tell him that he's 17 and this is the best possible time of his life and everything is wonderful and you're young and the world is beautiful and everything is fabulous when being a teenager is no different from any other stage of life. Um, it's got good and bad aspects to it, but you're constantly bombarded with this propaganda that everything is wonderful. Therefore, you know that wor the world is not a wonderful place. Therefore, you go the other way. Um, you seek out that which is dark because you're sick and tired of being bombarded with nice images, with images that the light is fabulous. So you are drawn towards the dark. Um, and uh, that's why I believe our eye is uh, automatically drawn towards the Witch King on the left of the picture. We live in a, in, in a world where everyone is telling us that everything is wonderful and that we're in a, an age when things get better all the time, but something in the back of our heads tells us that we know that this is false. Something in the back of our heads say, there's always going to be crap in the world. There's always going to be uh, sorrow in the world. Why do the commercials show us joyful people all the time? Why do the sitcoms show us people who, whose lives are just one long laugh? Why do uh, movies constantly tell us that the, the good guy is going to win out in the end? This sort of thing, if you ask me, has a strong psychological effect on us. Um, that which you fear most never actually happens, which is why I think a lot of people become morbid, because they have they've simply sagged under the weight of the constant barrage of artificial positivism. They're seeking out the dark side of things simply because they want to restore some sort of sanity to, uh, the, um, to the big lie that I alluded to in an earlier video. The big lie that tells them everything is fabulous, everything is great, and the only people who are actually failing in life are losers. That horrible word that we have in the West here. Losers. Um, no, because there are people that actually have the option of succeeding in the world and constantly, uh, or sorry, consciously choose to fail because they don't see the success as a good thing. They see success as actually a bad thing. They choose to, quote unquote, fail because or if you choose to fail, is that actually a failure? Um, again, another misused word. So harm is that which we don't want to happen. So what we're constantly told is good in our mind becomes a harm. So being a success, being a rah, 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 bleach blonde cheerleader type uh, trophy wife who's uh, constantly wrapped in the flag and stands for family values and um, all this sort of thing is to us a harm. To become that is an actual positive harm. It's an evil thing. We look at that and that's horrible. Why? Because the two polarities are not in the balance. This is relentless positiveness which drives us to the negative because our innate desire for balance. My infamous 50-50 thing. The world of the universe, phenomenal reality, and especially in here is a, is a mixture of both sides, light and darkness. Um, this is going to take a lot more than one video to, uh, to elaborate upon, but I'll, uh, I'll go with a, an, another quote here. Uh, it's from this book by a fellow by the name of Sri Krishna Prem. That's Initiation into Yoga. Uh, I know that I've just sort of um, automatically shut people's minds uh, to, to this subject by putting this in here. But anyway, uh, just, an, just more quote dropping. The essentially creative act is the union of opposites. We are afraid of all that is dark within ourselves, not realizing that it is but the shadow of what is light and therefore inseparable from it. But we are afraid of the dark as such. 
We people it with bogies, which then terrify us all the more. Yet if we but turn around and face the shadow, everything is changed. The devouring nightmare becomes a source of inspiration. The malignant witch becomes the beneficent goddess. And from the union of light and darkness shines a radiance that is beyond all that we know as light. If we can understand what darkness is, if we can understand what it is that we push away from ourselves with such violence, i.e. the people that sort of, um, the reaction that causes people to think that I'm the ultimate evil, um, and I'm not saying that I'm the, the, the dark side here, but some people have projected that upon me, the violence that causes us to push this away from ourselves is a reaction to the relentless light. If we just see the two as co-equal, that creates a situation in which everything is in balance and there is no longer any need, there is no longer any desire, there is no longer any harm because we see everything for what it is. Light is just light. It's neither good nor bad. Dark is just dark. It just is. It's neither good nor bad. Harm just is. It's neither good nor bad. Harm's opposite just is. It's neither good nor bad. Everything in balance. Um, and uh, that's why I say um, desire and revulsion, pulling something towards yourself or pushing it violently away, is essentially doing the same thing. Thank you.